Hi everyone, my name is Judy Divis. I'm a violist with the Omaha Symphony and I'd like to take a couple of minutes to talk to you about your instrument and keeping it in good repair so that when this is all over and we're all back together again, we'll have an instrument that you can play on proudly. So um, there are a couple things with the instrument that are really inexpensive repair if you catch them in time. The first thing I'd like to tell you about is this piece right here. I don't know if you can see it. There, that's better. Okay. This is called a button on a violin or viola. And on a cello, it's the end pin. So it's that part that comes where the end pin comes out and you can adjust the height of the instrument when you're trying to play it. This button needs to be absolutely flush up against the instrument. No space between the instrument and the bottom of this button. They have a ridge on them. You can see it clearly when you look at that. Um, to replace a button is a very inexpensive repair, somewhere between $10 and $20. Um, but if the button is not in there straight, if it's crooked, if it's popping out, um, it can cause a huge amount of damage, and I'm going to tell you why. So if you look here, this button is attached with something called a tail cord. The tail cord attaches to this, which is the tail piece, and as you can see, it holds the strings, keeps the tension on the strings, right? That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure on your strings, your bridge, your tail piece, and this button. <clears throat> if it's not seated in there properly, all that pressure will rip that button right out. Now, there's a piece in here, a piece of wood called the block, and that's what that button goes through and attaches to. Um, it's not glued in there, so it's just fitted really securely. If that rips the block, it tears this whole part of the instrument out, and that becomes a very expensive repair, probably over $500, <laughs> modestly speaking. So that's one thing you can look at. You just check the button and make sure if you don't think it looks right, you need to have a professional look at it. Um, and if you um, are wondering about it, you can take a picture of it and send it to uh, a luthier. That's the repair person. You can even send one to me and I'll look at it and tell you whether what I think, okay? Um, the second thing I want to tell you about is a piece called the sound post. The sound post is inside the instrument. It's on the uh, side with the highest string. So on viola, that's the A string, violin E, and cello A. You can see it. It stands from the back of the instrument up here, and it will come right behind this foot of the bridge. Now, it's fitted in there. Again, we never glue anything inside. Inside, We're not going to glue the sound post, but it's fitted so that if you run your finger right here, you should not feel any bumps. If you feel a bump there, that means the sound post is too tight. A professional will just be able to take that out. There's a special tool they have to use, and they can make it smaller and put it back in. That is also a very inexpensive repair. If you don't do that and the sound post continues to be too tight because of this pressure that I talked to you about before, it will cause a crack. We call it a sound post crack and it can go in this direction. Sometimes they go in this direction or that's a bass bar crack probably, but sound post cracks are very difficult and expensive to repair. The whole top of the instrument has to come off and um, it's kind of a big deal. So if you feel that bump, if you feel a bump, your sound post is too tight, needs to be trimmed. Many times when you buy an instrument brand new, it will come with the sound post too tight. And even as you play it, and the, you play the instrument in a little bit after you've had it for a while, it needs to be set up. A professional needs to set it up so that everything will work properly and you won't have a major damage to the instrument. So those are two things you can watch for. You can also see if your bridge 
is not straight. It should be straight up and down like mine is. And um, bridges will start to fall this way just from being tuned. And sometimes they'll even do this where they curl up. That bridge is warped and needs to be replaced. Um, and if not, it'll fall over eventually and cause some damage and a very loud noise that will scare you to death, believe me. Um, anyway, then um, the other thing you should look at is to make sure that all your pegs turn. I know a lot of you aren't too excited about trying to turn your pegs. And if you are not comfortable doing that, that's fine. You don't have to do it. But they should be able to turn easily and they shouldn't, they should be just about flush here. But this piece is called the scroll. These are your tuning pegs. If they're sticking out too far, that can be fixed. It wouldn't cause a lot of, it doesn't cost a lot of money, but it will make it much easier for you to turn those pegs and sometimes they get really stuck in there. Um, same thing with fine tuners. These can be lubricated and you can, you can turn those. Um, the other, one other thing that's really not very expensive, but um, is if you happen to have seams that pop open. So the instrument is a top piece, a bottom piece, and then this wood is molded here. It's all glued right along here. And wood ha has a tendency to expand and contract with the weather. So when it's nice and warm and moist outside, the wood expands. When it's colder, when the furnace kicks on, it will contract. That kind of motion can cause the instrument to pop seams open. Um, you can tell if a seam is open if you take a piece of paper and you go along the edge. If the paper goes into the instrument, that seam is open. It, you can't glue that yourself and please don't have anybody else do it. Um, it has to have a special glue and a special clamp. Um, the open seam really won't cause a lot of damage to your instrument. It just rattles and makes a really funny buzzing sound that um, is, it's not you. It's actually the seam is open, so that needs to be addressed. Um, lastly, I would like to just remind you to have a soft cloth. Mine, of course, is so decorative. Just to make sure you wipe the rosin off your strings and off your instrument every time you play. Rosin gets in the strings and eats away at the strings and so they don't uh, live as long. And also when it gets you know, on the varnish, this instrument's varnish, you can tell that it's shiny. Your instrument's varnish too, they all are. Um, rosin, when it gets uh, damp or if it's left on there too long, it will eat its way into that varnish. Um, it, it's uh, very difficult to get it off then. And if you have that problem, a professional can clean the instrument for you. And I highly recommend doing that because eventually it will ruin the instrument. So thanks a lot for listening. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, take good care of your instruments. Luthiers, um, if you look up online, you can just Google the word luthier or string repair, string instrument repair. Luthier is L-U-T-H-I-E-R. And um, you can make arrangements to get your instrument in to be fixed and it will be safe for you. So um, if you attend a Title I school, I run an organization, um, a nonprofit that can help with the cost of repairing your instruments. Um, if you have a major repair, like one that we've discussed, a big crack down the face of the instrument, or the button's been torn, or the block's been torn out, or the neck is off. This is the neck of your instrument. You should not see any separation here, and it should not move or click. <laughs> Um, if you have any of those issues, you can contact the, um, the nonprofit that I run through the Omaha Chamber Music Society. It's called Good Vibrations. And we've been raising money uh, for a couple of years now to take care of the cost of repairing 
the stringed instrument that you own. We don't do the school-owned instruments, but if it's your personal instrument, um, we may be able to help you. So I'm gonna have my friends at the symphony, um, if they say this is okay, we'll, uh, we'll have them send along information on how you can get in touch with me and we can try to get your instrument um, fixed for you. Okay, thanks for listening. Take good care of yourselves and be safe. Okay, bye-bye.